You're my only hope. Sing to me the song of the stars of your galaxy dancing and laughing and laughing again. My dreams are so far Sing to me of the plans That you have for me over again So I lay my head back down And I lift my hands and pray To be only only yours I know now you're my only hope I give you my destiny I'm giving you all of me I want your symphony singing in all that I am I know now you're my only hope. Good morning, everybody. It is so good to be back with my friends here at Unity of Delray Beach. But before I get started, Harvey, I got a question for you. You said that Jean Marie Eck was going to be coming here to speak? Yes. Is she your new senior minister or a candidate for senior minister? She's a candidate, presently. But I don't know who else applied. <laughs> but I studied with Jean Marie. We're very good friends. And I would love to have her close to me. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> we studied together at the village, and we have become pretty good friends. And since she's been in Houston, I only see her once a week when I go to the village for the annual People's Convention. So. This is August, August. We're almost out of August, getting ready to move into the month of September. In the, the Unity Movement, the month of August is the month in which we remember, celebrate, honor, and pay attention to that power called will. The color? for the month is silver. I've got silver nail polish on. My top is as close to silver as I'm gonna get right now. The disciple is Matthew, and the bodily center for the power of will is the center of the brain. But exactly what is will? The revealing word teaches us that will is the center in mind and body around which revolve all of the activities that constitute consciousness. 
It is the avenue through which the I am expresses its full potentiality. It's kind of flowery language. You know the revealing word was written by our co-founder and the father of unity, Charles Fillmore, and he wrote in flowery terms. That was the language that they used back then when he was doing this writing. But remember this. You don't have to remember all of those flowery words I just read from the really revealing word. But remember this. The will is the executive faculty of the mind. It is the determining factor in all of humankind. What we will, what we decree, comes to pass in our experience. You hear about strong-willed people. My mom used to tell me, and sometimes not in such flattering terms, that I had a very strong will. <laughs> I was determined to do what was on my heart to do. I was determined to be what on my heart I knew I was to be. And that didn't always correspond well with what she was determined that I do or be. But it all worked out beautifully for both of us. In the Lord's Prayer, in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth and in heaven. In Luke, the 22nd chapter, talks about how Jesus withdrew. Withdrew from the disciples, withdrew from everyone, and he went alone to pray. For he knew that the time was fast approaching where he would go through something that he really didn't want to go through. He really did not want to put his physical body through that crucifixion journey. And in the 41st verse, Scripture tells us he drew about a stone's throw beyond the rest of the disciples and he knelt down and he prayed and he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. And he followed that up with, yet not my will, but thine be done. He submitted his ego, human will, to the will of God. And verse 33 tells us that an angel came and appeared to Jesus and gave him the strength to do what he knew he was called to do. Not my will, but thine be done. Jesus set the example for all of us to submit our egos, let go of that ego, and submit and follow the will of God but we know in our hearts what it is we are called to do, just like Jesus knew what he was called to do. And sometimes what in our hearts we know we're called to do is not what we want to do. But we are, in fact, the living, breathing essence of Christ here on earth. That indwelling Christ directs us and guides us. And this is why it is important for us to remember those words of Jesus. Not my will, God. God's will be done. Now we do have the right to make our own choices. And it is a precious right. We grow, we grow spiritually 
when we know that we have the freedom to decide our own paths and decide what makes us happy. But we grow even more when we understand that what truly makes us happy is to follow that will, that small voice deep, deep, deep down inside that guides us, directs us. And even though following God's will might be uncomfortable initially, we know that at the end of the story, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. At the end of the story, we have that peace that surpasses all understanding. There are people who are inclined to try and control other people and deny the will that is within individuals. Those are the ones who sometimes well-intentioned like my mom and my dad, but they don't always understand that what is within the individual is their path to follow. It's their path to follow. And it's, I mean, it's very challenging for parents. It is very challenging when we see loved ones following a path that we see as unhealthy, or a path that you don't think they should follow for whatever reason. It is very important to remember that an individual's path is their path. I remember when I was raising my son, his father and I had divorced and I was a single parent. And when my son hit his teens, <laughs> it was a prayerful journey. <laughs> And um, I was bemoaning the fact that this boy was just not doing anything that I thought he should do. And a very dear, dear, dear friend of mine said, you gotta remember, it's his path. And you don't know where that path is gonna take him. And I had just started studying unity teachings and unity principles, and I understood what she was saying, but I didn't want to accept it. I had him in a program for gifted and talented kids, and he decided that he didn't, he no longer wanted to act like a gifted and talented kid. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Now, more than 30 years later, I got it. I got it. It took me a long time to take my hands off that wheel and let him go ahead and drive his own bus. But the end result is beautiful. We had our rocky times. Lord knows we did. But I am so proud of him to this day. For he is indeed the person God put him here to be, not the one I had planned for him to be. When we impose our will onto others, we are telling them that we want to control them. We want to leave them without their own true voices. Nearly everyone has found themselves imposing their will on others at one time or another. Trying to impose your will on the will of others can be tempting for a whole lot of reasons. Parents are well-intentioned. Most teachers are well-intentioned. But, the will of a child, the will of a partner, the will of a friend, the will of anybody else in your life is not your will. They are 
called upon to be and do who Christ put them here to be. Even when we have the very best of intentions, the people who we are trying to help with our advice and our direction could very well end up resenting us turning against us and def in defiance, doing things that they don't even want to do. I remember, you know, after my son, I guess he was, I don't mind saying it, I know I'm aging myself and I'm giving away my age. My son is in his 50s now. When he was in his 30s, and I was of legal age when he was born too, by the way. <laughs> When he was in his 30s, he told me, as we were talking about stuff that had happened in our past, he said, I just didn't want to be called a mama's boy. Think about that. I didn't want my friends calling me a mama's boy, and I acted out. How many of us act out because we feel like we're being forced to do something that is not in our hearts to do, and therefore we do things that are harmful to ourselves. It happens. It happens. Khalil Gibran, in his book, The Prophet, reminds us that our children are here for us to be nurtured, but they're not ours to possess and own. We nurture our children. We nurture our loved ones, our family members. I'm the oldest of 19 grandchildren. And some of my younger cousins, in defiance of their parents, ran away from home and came to live with me. <laughs> Ultimately, they all eventually went back to their parents because they recognized that living with me wasn't all that good either. <laughs> Wasn't a whole lot of fun. Because what they didn't know was I was talking with their moms or dads every day, letting them know what they were doing. And we kind of worked together to help them find their path without, without my being the, the, the really harsh one. The youngest one actually lived with me for two or three years before she went back home, but that was okay too. We, we're still very, very close. In fact, we just talked yesterday. So if you, if you catch yourself being a bit bossy, make a note of it. There are ways to guide and support and nurture people without imposing your will or being bossy. So write down what that situation was and why you acted the way you did. Sometimes we're acting out of fear. And we do not want to impose fear upon anyone. The Course of Miracles teaches us that there are only two emotions, love and fear. And when you're acting out of fear, you forget that you are indeed love. You can be concerned, yes, be concerned, but not fearful. Because that fearful energy is reflected and it is reacted upon in a way that you ne don't necessarily want to see. You may have pushed a friend to try something new because deep inside you wanted to try it yourself. Interfering with work teammates because you aren't sure of their abilities. Let people be who they are. And in your giving other people permission to be who they are, you are more empowered to be who you are. It can almost sometimes feel natural to impose your will when you feel that you know best. You know it all. But there is a big, big freedom 
and trusting others to find their own methods, their own paths, their own joys, and their own way of doing things. And it could be totally, completely different from yours. I can attest that my son's way of thinking and acting and living is totally, completely different from what I thought his life should be. He's happy, and once I accepted that truth, I'm happy. And I put that to practice with my grandchildren. I, so far, I'm doing the same thing with my great-grands. So we're all at peace. Sometimes the best course of action is to merely just step back. Step back and relinquish all control. And in doing so, you might even discover a totally different point of view yourself. When we do the will of God, we exercise our individual will in wisdom, in love, and in spiritual understanding. And we build our own spiritual character. First Peter, the second chapter, 15th verse in the English Standard Version of the Bible says this, For this is the will of God, that by doing good you shall put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. By doing good, we quiet the noise, the noise that's going on around us. By being good, by doing good, by holding good in our hearts, and by sharing the good that is God from within, we let the Christ light shine, not only in ourselves, but in everyone else. Be the Christ that you know you are. Share your Christ light. Shine your Christ light. And let that be your will to give everyone permission and space to be and who and what they are. That is the power of will. God bless you. Wonderful. Thank you, Reverend Vernell, as usual. A wonderful message, and thank you for the kind words about Jean Marie. Appreciate that. Now it is time for us to take our love offerings, our gifts, our tithes into our hands. Our offering baskets are in the back of the sanctuary next to the exit doors, very cleverly positioned. And if you wish to put your love offering on a credit card, you can do so at the bookstore or online with Tithely. It's called Tithely. We have a little flyer out there that shows you how to do it. Works wonderfully. But let's take our offerings into our hands, and I'll say the offering blessing first, and then I'll ask you to repeat it with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. Let's take that together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source, and I am the channel. Amen. And let's also take a moment in prayer to give thanks for these love offerings, these gifts, these tithes. We know they were given in love and gratitude, and we receive them in love and gratitude. And we affirm they go forth to do God's work through each one of us here. This congregation goes throughout the world to bless many. And Father, we thank you for the unlimited substance of your loving universe, which through your grace flows into our life through unlimited channels. Thank you, thank you, God. Amen. 
If anyone has a prayer request, the prayer boxes are in the back of the sanctuary. There are two of them. Please fill out a prayer slip. We'd love the opportunity to pray with you about any matter. There's no prayer too big or too small. And now it is time for us to stand and sing our peace song. protection together the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us the power of God protects us the presence of God watches over us and wherever we are God is and all is well have a wonderful Sunday afternoon Thank you.